Hi, I'm Mr. Green here again with the third lesson in the physics topic uh, atoms and radiation. This lesson is on ions and radiation, and our learning objective is to know what an isotope is and the different forms of radiation. If you could pause the video while you write that down as your hello. Okay, first up we'll start with some retrieval questions. So there are five questions there. If you can answer those, pause the video while you do so and unpause it when you'd like the answers. Okay, question one. What's the centre of an atom called? It's referred to as the nucleus. Question two. What do we find at the centre of an atom? We find protons and neutrons. They're present within the nucleus. What do we find in orbits around the centre of an atom? That would be the electrons. What are the two atomic models that exist? Well, we have the plum pudding model and Bohr's model, or the nuclear model. Which experiment led to the discovery of protons? That's the gold leaf alpha scattering experiment by Ernest Rutherford. So he ensured that we knew that there were protons present in the centre. Okay, our learning outcomes. Describe how radioactivity is detected and explain radioactivity in terms of alpha, beta and gamma radiation. Okay. First thing, draw and label an atom. So pause the video whilst you attempt that. Okay, an atom should look like this. It should have protons and electrons and neutrons in the center. So in the center you've got protons and neutrons and orbiting around the outside electrons. The number of electrons orbiting outside the nucleus should be the same as the number of protons in the nucleus. Protons in the center neutrons and electrons outside. What's the charge on the electron, proton and neutron? You should know that is positive for proton, negative for electron and no charge for a neutron. Okay, quick recap on atoms. Atoms are really, really small. Radius about 1 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. Nucleus is much smaller than the atom itself. The radius is less than one ten thousandth of the radius of the atom. And most of the mass of the atom is in the nucleus, so it's really concentrated. When electrons absorb radiation, they move further away from the nucleus of the atom. And when radiation is emitted, the opposite of that happens. Okay, what charge does an atom have? Atoms generally have no overall charge. The same number of protons and electrons. So can it become charged? Pause your video and write down an explanation as to why you think atoms can become charged. Okay, so. Protons are held really tightly in the nucleus, but electrons are not as tightly held. So they're more able to be lost or even gained. Gaining or losing electrons changes the overall charge of the atom. It changes that balance between protons and electrons, between positive and negative. When we form a charged particle, we refer to it as an ion rather than an atom. So an ion is an atom or a molecule in which the total number of electrons is greater or less than the total number of protons. This gives the atom or the molecule a total positive or negative charge. Let's see if we can work these out. So, for example, on the board there we have a hydrogen atom. Has that got a charge or not? It's got one proton, one positive charge in the centre, one electron. Do they cancel each other out? Yeah, one positive, take away one negative, gives us no charge overall. What about now, a hydrogen ion? One proton, two electrons. So you've got one positive, take away two which gives us a charge of minus one. So overall the charge is minus one. We've got a sulfur ion here. It's got 16 positives. How many negatives has it got? Count them three. It's got 18 negatives present on there. So 16, balance that, take away 18, gives us minus two. We have here a fluoride ion. Again, it's got a charge of plus nine in the center. How many electrons are on the outside, so therefore what charge would it have? 
So the plus 9 has got 10 electrons around the outside. 9 minus 10 gives us minus 1. Overall charge is minus 1. We've got sodium ion here. That's got 11 positives in the centre, 11 protons in the centre. How many electrons on the outside and what's the overall charge? So it's got 11 positives, 10 negatives. 11 take away 10 leaves us with 1. So it's got a charge of plus 1 overall. And finally, this oxygen atom here. Have a look at the material I've given you from the periodic table and tell me what's the charge. Okay, from the periodic table we can see it's got 8 protons. How many electrons are on the outside? 2, 4, 6, 8. 8 minus 8 gives us 0, so no overall charge. Next, isotopes. See if we can revise this. What are each of these isotopes of? Have a look at a periodic table online or use one in your periodic table. Give yourself two minutes to do that. Pause the video while you answer those questions. Okay, when we come to answer this, we should know that an isotope is an atom that contains a different number of neutrons, but the same number of protons. It is the proton number that tells you what the element is. So in each case here, we're looking for the number that stays the same. Number one each of those atoms has three protons. What's different about them? They've got different numbers of neutrons, that's why they're isotopes. So number one, three protons, that would be lithium. Second one, what's the same? All got 17 protons. 17 protons would give us chlorine. They're isotopes because they have different numbers of neutrons. Finally, the bottom one, all of those atoms contain 92 protons. Check our periodic table, we'll see that is uranium. Again, they're three different isotopes of uranium because they have three different masses, different numbers of neutrons. So, if an atom's radioactive, this means it emits or gives out ionizing radiation or particles. But why would an atom become radioactive? Pause the video and write down your thoughts on that. Give yourself a minute. Okay, protons and neutrons are held together in the nucleus by strong nuclear forces. This makes sense. Po protons are positively charged, and you've got a lot of positive charges really concentrated, pushed together. They want to repel. They want to really push each other apart. But this strong nuclear force, this binding energy, holds the nucleus together. When the binding energy is strong enough, the nucleus is stable. But when it's not, the nucleus becomes unstable. It's got far too much energy. Unstable atoms will lose mass and lose energy in order to become stable. So if the balance of protons and neutrons present in the nucleus isn't quite right, that binding energy, that binding force will not be enough to keep them together, and so it will lose mass and lose energy to become stable. By doing that, it releases these three, alpha, beta, or gamma radiation. Pause your video and make sure you copy down this table. But at the bottom, make sure you answer those three questions at the bottom. So pause it while you copy that down, and we'll answer those questions, okay? Okay, first type is alpha radiation. Alpha radiation consists of two protons and two neutrons. Overall, it's got a charge of plus two. There's no electrons around there. We can see how it's represented. It's a, a Greek letter alpha. It's got a mass of four and an atomic number of two. By how much does mass number and atomic number of the atom change? Well, if you were to emit that, what you'd get is the atomic number would decrease by four. Sorry, the mass number would decrease by four, the atomic number by two. Again, go through this in a lot more detail when we look at our changes in the nucleus. Beta radiation consists of a, an electron emitted when the neutron in the nucleus turns into a proton. So the nucleus itself turns into a proton and an electron. The electron is emitted, the electron's fired out, and the proton stays behind in the nucleus. So with that being the case, how much does the mass number and the atomic number of the atom change? The mass number stays the same. A neutron's changed into a proton, which weigh exactly the same but the atomic number increases by one. That neutron has turned into a proton. Finally, gamma radiation. Gamma is a high energy, high frequency wave. It's got no mass and no charge, so it's not deflected by anything, just carries straight through. By how much does the mass number and the atomic number of the atom change when gamma is emitted? 
It does not change at all. Mass number and atomic number remain exactly the same. Okay, our penetration power. So different types of nuclear radiation have different levels of penetration power and range. So alpha has got the lowest penetrating power. It can travel through 5 centimetres of air and it's stopped by a bit of paper. Beta has got a range of a few metres in air. So it's the second most penetrating. But it's stopped by a thin sheet of aluminium. Gamma has got the highest penetrating power. It has an unlimited range in air and is stopped by a really, really thick amount of lead. Again, pause the video, get those details down for me. Okay, our ionizing power. Ionizing power means that what the um, radioactive particle will do while the radioactive emission, it will be absorbed by the atom and it will knock an electron off. Now, alpha particles are the most ionizing. It's got the largest charge, it's got the largest mass, and so it ionizes atoms easily. It encounters a lot of atoms. Beta is moderately ionizing. It's got a much smaller charge and a much smaller size, so it doesn't encounter atoms as much, and it only ionizes them moderately. Gamma is the least ionizing because it doesn't interact with any atoms when it passes through them. It's really rare it will interact with an atom because it's got no mass and it's not charged. So when it does, it will interact and ionize them, but it doesn't do that frequently because it's got such a low mass. Okay, our progress check. Copy and complete that table below. Pause the video while you do so. Okay, I'm going to put the answer up on there. Alpha symbol is the Greek letter alpha. It's got a range of 5 centimetres in there, stopped by paper with a strong ionising ability. Beta is the Greek letter beta. Range in air is one centimeter, sorry, one meter, I do apologize. Stopped by a few millimeters of aluminium and its ionizing ability is moderate. With gamma, it's got the symbol of the Greek letter gamma. Its range in air is completely unlimited. It's stopped by centimeters of lead or one meter thick concrete and it's very weakly ionizing. Explain in much detail as you can what radioactivity is using those keywords. Pause your video while you do that. Okay, in order to detect nuclear radiation, we use something called a Geiger counter. This uses what's called a Geiger Muller tube, and we'll look at this in more detail as we get further in. The counter clicks every time a radioactive particle enters that tube, and the Geiger counter measures the counts or clicks per minute. The strength is measured in a unit called Becquerels. Why do you think it's called a Becquerel? It's the name of a scientist that did a lot of work on this. Okay, quick quiz, A, B or C. Pause the video while you go through these. Okay, so read your questions, write down your answers, A, B or C. Okay, question one. What's an iron? Is it a metal, a charged particle or a non-metal? Correct answer is, it's a charged particle. Question two. Why do some atoms decay? Is it because they're stable, because they want to or because they are unstable? because they're unstable. Question three, what do isotopes contain different numbers of neutrons, electrons, or protons? Isotopes contain different numbers of neutrons. What's the most penetrating form of radiation? Alpha, beta, or gamma? Correct answer here is C, gamma. What's the most ionizing form of radiation? Alpha, beta, or gamma? In this case, correct answer is A, alpha. Question six, what can stop gamma radiation? Paper, aluminium, or lead? Gamma radiation, again, has got an unlimited range in there. It takes a lot to stop it, so it would be lead. And finally, what is the strength of radioactivity measured in Bohr's, Rutherford's, or Becquerel's? It's measured in Becquerel's. Okay, thank you very much for your time there. Uh, anything you want, just please resume that, uh, re-watch that video again to get any help. I hope it was helpful. See you soon.